In this video, we're going to take a look at barcodes and QR codes for IGCSE Computer Science. So first things first, what is a barcode? So a barcode is just a method of storing data. Now it's not meant for a human to read, it's meant for the computer or computer system to read. And it's a visual way of entering that data into the system, usually by some form of automatic data entry, not manual. So you don't type in a barcode, although if, you do, if you've ever worked in a shop like I have when I was younger, you can type in barcodes or product codes if the barcode doesn't scan, but on the whole, use a barcode scanner and that saves a lot of time. Now it works by measuring the width and spacing of vertical lines, and it's what's called uh, one-dimensional. Now, all barcodes should be a 12-digit number. Now, in my two examples, I've just shown it simple using words. It should really be numbers, but I wanted to prove a point of it representing a binary number. So, 12-digit numbers, the first number is what's called the product type, so that might be, is it, is it food, is it games console, what is it? The next five numbers would be the manufacturer code, then the next five would be the product code, and the last digit is a check digit which we've covered in the data communication unit, so it's a way of making sure that data is correct when it's scanned in. So my two examples here, we've got hello, so H-E-L-L-O, which will be a series of binary strings or binary numbers from the ASCII table. And then this one here is a lot shorter because it's just representing the number 97 or 0110001 in binary, because that is lowercase a. Now if you get an exam question, you'll sort of a set menu answer we can use, which is on the screen now. So the user uses a barcode scanner on the barcode. Usually when you're in the shop you might hear a beep or you'll see a red light pop out. Now the barcode scanner shines this red light at the barcode. Now that light itself is called an illuminator. Light is then reflected off the white lines and absorbed by the black lines. And a photoelectric sensor, or you can just say a light sensor, detects these reflections. And because the widths of the lines are all different, they all represent a different binary value, which gets converted into a binary sequence or a bit pattern that the computer can then use in its database. Now a QR code is very similar to a barcode except for instead of being one dimensional, there are two dimensional. So instead of just measuring the width of lines, they also measure the position and the alignment of squares and dots on the screen. Now, there's a corner square, which you'll see on the next slide, which is used to align the image. And then there are smaller squares that are used to look at the position, which you'll see in a second. But it still works with shining a light or taking a photograph and looking at the black areas and the white areas. So the big squares identify the position and the smaller squares are for alignment. So we've got a small square here and a large square here. So that's what aligns the image, which, which is what allows you to sort of take a photo on a bit of an angle. That's why lots of posters and some even street arts and graffiti use QR codes that they painted themselves to spread like an idea or an advert or something like that. So these two um, QR codes have been generated. By all means, pause the video, scan them both, see what you think. It should take you to a website nice and easily. Now, why would we use QR over just barcode? It's easy to use, because instead of just using a barcode scanner, it wouldn't actually work with a QR code, whereas a lot of the smartphone apps now will work with both. It's more secure, because we can apply encryption to our data, because we can store that much more data, and because we can store more data, that's a benefit in itself. Now, in the exam, you've got questions such as this. So, a supermarket uses a barcode scanner to read barcodes on its products. Describe how the barcode scanner reads a barcode. So that's going back to that set menu. We scan it with the barcode scanner. The black would absorb more light than the white areas. A photoelectric sensor or a light sensor will measure those reflections. That will get converted into a bit pattern and then the microprocessor will use it for whatever purpose. Now to manage its stock for uh, 8B, that's sort of talking about how we can actually use the barcode. So every time you scan a product at the till, at the POS system, it would look up the bit pattern or database to identify a product. And then we can look at that product and say, right, you just bought one, so we'll take one off the quantity. Perhaps when it gets to a certain level of stock, such as let's say you've got only 10 boxes of cereal left, it then would send a signal to the warehouse or it might send an automatic order to, a, to the supplier and they will come and deliver more boxes of cereal. 
So we take a little mark scheme on the screen there, shining a light, it's reflected back, different reflections give different patterns and the microprocessor interprets it. And for B, the barcode identifies a unique product. We look it up and look for the stock levels. They can be automatically deducted and we can check when it's below a certain level and automatically reorder. Similarly, for a QR code, we've got a question here about a venue. So each ticket's got a QR code. It's scanned at the entrance of the venue. A person can enter the venue with a valid QR code. When a person enters, a count is incremented to show how many people have entered the venue, explain how the system scans the QR code and checks if someone can enter. So that one, you were looking for an answer of use a camera or a barcode scanner, but camera is probably the more obvious one, to scan the QR code on the ticket. This will then be checked against um, numbers in a database. So certain QR codes for each customer will bring up their details, so whoever it is. If the QR code is valid, uh, increase the counter to see how many people come and let them in. If it's not in a database, then reject their entry. So take a look there. So we've got the camera taking a picture, talking about how the black squares reflect different light to white. The corner squares are used for alignment, so just use a bit of that understanding of how the QR codes work. The pattern gets converted and sent to the computer or the microprocessor, and then it's sort of a little bit like a sensor question where we then apply sort of knowledge of how a microprocessor will make decisions. So it compares to the valid QR codes. If it matches, we let them come in. If not, we don't. If we do let them in, we'll increase the counter so we know how many people have come to the venue. And hopefully that was helpful. Quite a popular question. You see barcodes come up, not all the time, but quite a lot. So it's something that you should understand. By all means, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.